It's interesting to ask what it looks like versus you know how it behaves or what it uh, feels like um, so I'll return to the, the sort of visual part of it in a second but I think that empowerment feels like the ability to make a choice I think feeling the freedom to have a sense of I have a decision I can make um, to me indicates empowerment because what is the most disempowering thing that you can think of it's just to feel that you are trapped um, and it means you don't have a choice about whatever aspect of your life um, you're looking to move forward in or do a sort of life pivot or want to cultivate so I think I think having a choice and and, and however one wants to interpret that and then in terms of what does empowerment actually look like from a visual perspective, that's interesting because a lot of the work that I've done has been on the semiotics of visual self-presentation. So the interesting thing about the connection between what we might call fashion and power, and I use fashion from a very large perspective, not a runway perspective, is that it's very context specific. So there are a different set of visual rules um, that and symbols that dominate and are rewarded in any given context and that will be wildly different in another culture or another subculture um, or another time and place. So the key to visual empowerment is to understand your audience and once you understand your audience you can adorn yourself accordingly and present in a way uh, that will be understood and well received by your audience, but also can then assert your independence, your knowledge, your flair um, as sort of a combined effort. So I always say it's about distinguished compliance. It's about looking like you get it, like you understand the rules of the game, while also demonstrating that you have something unique and special to add. I think it's interesting because technology, as we talk about a lot, connects us more than ever. That's no revelation. But it also disconnects us more than ever. It really depends on how we define connection or meaningful connection. And so I think the real power of technology is to facilitate more meaningful connection. So the digital part is not the end goal. It's not the sort of thing in itself, it's an enabler, hopefully, of more human-to-human, face-to-face, longer-term uh, connection. With respect to socialization as it connects to work, I think the idea of a social workplace has never been more celebrated or more relevant. I mean, look at a place like work club where you have an open space where you have this sort of commingling of people from different industries and different backgrounds and there's so there's so much value in the um, the accidental bump-ins and the the relationship sparks that come from that sort of um, a setting but there's also something to be said for a time and a place to retreat to really reflect. And I think that is what is missing from a lot of more traditional co-working spaces or corporations that have moved to simply an open floor uh, plan is that, that that quiet reflection time where it's all social all the time. And this, this is reflected also in our engagement on social media where everything that comes into our minds, we are um, either blurting it out to our coworker immediately or we're tweeting it out or we're looking for some sort of affirmation. So these thoughts are being processed in real time rather than we have a thought, we reflect on it, and then after a moment we reach out in a very directed way. And so I think there's certainly a place for the social workplace and 
tech platforms like Slack are really a wonderful example of how creating more of a uh, collaborative flow can be so fruitful for many organizations. But I think we should never forget the value of quiet, solitary reflection. Say the number one thing is to remember that it is again back to what I was saying earlier earlier about the technology piece being a means to an end, not the end itself. So what you how you present yourself in that digital space is 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 an advertisement. It is supposed to earn you an in-person, face-to-face opportunity to sell yourself. You don't want to undersell yourself so that the person will never get in front of you. You also don't want to oversell so that what you're actually delivering in person is a disappointment. But you need to remember that you are essentially creating a marketing campaign for yourself. As dehumanizing and horrible as that sounds, it's, it's merely a tool to afford you the opportunity to get some face time with people that you otherwise probably wouldn't meet in your everyday life. So if you use it in that respect and practice honest branding, <laughs> I think it can be a really wonderful tool for broadening you know, your dating base.